You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. So this morning, I'm going to be speaking about a message that is celebrating the fact that Jesus has come. Celebrating the fact that we get to come at this time of the year, the whole world stops and we celebrate the fact that Jesus has come. Some people may have drifted away from that, but for us, this is the best time of year because we are reminded every day that Jesus has come, that Jesus came down from heaven and stepped into our world to bring saving, to bring healing, to bring a restoration and a quickening to our spirit. This is the best of times. But this message today, I also wanna reveal to you that Jesus is still a Saviour, that Jesus is still a Saviour, that the Gospel hasn't changed. You may be saved now, you may have a relationship with Christ, you may be a Christian 10, 20, 30 years, but Jesus wants you to know for you as well, He is still a Saviour. He's not just a Saviour to the lost, He's not just a Saviour to the broken or the hurting, but He's also a Saviour to you. Are you happy about that this morning? Come on, all right. So I wanna have a look at just a snapshot, just a small portion of the lives of the disciples. And is that a time where they were so busy? They were going back to back to back of everything that was going on. Leading just previous to the Scripture, I'm gonna read John the Baptist, their friend has just been killed. They have just gone teaching and preaching nonstop, teaching and preaching. They got back to Jesus. They began to tell Him everything that had just been done. And Jesus said, let's have a break. You've gone so hard for so long, let's stop, let's have a rest. But what happened, they sat down and they tried to rest and more than 5,000 people came and Jesus began to teach, Jesus began to preach. And then they were hungry. Then Jesus said to them, how are we gonna feed all these people? And the disciples, they were already tired and they're like, months of wages, can't even pay for this. What do you want to happen? And it was just, so where we're gonna read is when they got on the boat to go across the lake. So I just wanted to set this up. So set up the season these disciples were in. I don't know if you can relate to it, where you've just gone back to back to back to back to something and you just wanna have a rest. So this is where we are diving straight into the Scripture this morning. It's in Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 52. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that His disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida while He sent the people home. After telling everyone goodbye, He went up to the hills by Himself to pray. Late that night, the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake and Jesus was alone on land. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and the waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. He intended to go past them. But when they saw Him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking He was a ghost. They were all terrified when they saw Him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, He said. Take courage, I am here. Then he climbed into the boat and the wind stopped. They were totally amazed for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. So this is where I want us to dive in this morning. This is where we're gonna be spending our time this morning, just looking at this portion of Scripture and just pulling some things out that I want us to realise by the end of this, the disciples are so similar to us. Really, they were so similar to us. 2,000 years meant really nothing because what was still going on on the inside, the pressures of life, what was going on around it was still exactly the same as what they are today. So for my first point this morning, what I wanna tell you is storms are not a compass as to where you are in the will of God. I want you to know this, storms are not a compass as to where you are in the will of God. So many times, like I've heard people, and I've said this myself, that you try to start something new, you try to do something different and you're met with resistance straight away. It's like, well, this mustn't be right. This must be the wrong thing. If all this bad stuff is happening as I'm going to step out, then maybe this isn't what I'm meant to be doing. No, 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 no. Maybe that's because it's exactly what you're meant to be doing. Storms are not a compass. Don't use trouble. Don't use struggles. Don't use bad stuff that is happening in your life to tell you whether you're going the right or wrong journey. See, Jesus, I love this. The disciples got everything right. 
they got everything right. Jesus insisted to them, they get on the boat, insisted the timing, they got that right. He told them to get on the boat, the location, they got that right. I said, get in the boat and sail towards Bethsaida. They got the direction right. They started right. They got the timing right. They got the location right. And they got the direction right, but they still hit a storm. They did everything that Jesus told them to do and they still encountered struggle. Just that alone, I want that to bring peace to people today. I want, that to, I want confusion to be eliminated today. I want the peace of God to come in, to cut through every storm where Jesus can step in and say, peace, peace. It is okay, I am here. A storm is not a compass. Just because something's hard doesn't mean that it's wrong. Just because it's hard doesn't mean that it's wrong. And it's, I used to play basketball growing up and we used to play man-on-man defence. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah, cool. So if I was told by coach to play defence on number 34, so what my goal would be, I meant to become between number 34 and the ball. I had to try and stop him getting the ball. So what would happen? I'm playing defence on him. I'm trying to stop him every opportunity I can get. But then what happens? He gets tired and his coach subs him and puts him on the bench. I'd no longer play defence on number 34 because he's no longer a threat. He's out of the game now. He's sitting down on the bench now. But when he comes back on, that is when the pressure is put back on. Sometimes in our Christian walk, in our journey, when we go to step into something that coach our Jesus has told us to, there can be resistance because we have an enemy that wants to try and come against us and stop the will of God happening in our life. So if you use the storm as a compass and say, well, maybe this is the wrong thing, the enemy is a win-win for him. So just because it's hard doesn't mean it's wrong. You feel me? That alone, I believe, can eliminate some confusion. Jesus will see your victory before you see the storm. Jesus is gonna see your victory before you see your storm. You might not even be in a struggle just yet. You might not even be in a storm just yet, but Jesus has already seen how He's gonna deliver you through that storm. So when you walk into it, it's like you throw your hands up, this is a surprise, this is too much. I feel like I can't do this. Jesus said, I've already seen a way. I can raise both my hands and still talk. This microphone is amazing. I love it. Sorry, trying to get distracted. But people will see how you navigate the storms. Some of the times where, some of the greatest times you share about Jesus won't actually be with your words, but how you live out the gospel. Some of the best times, some of your best messages aren't gonna be what you say. The, your friends around you, the people you work with, yeah, you can encourage and build them up and you can teach them about the gospel, but some of the best messages you'll ever preach It's just showing them how you can endure a storm. Just showing them how when everything feels like it's going crazy, that you have a peace that surpasses all understanding, that you can be the calm in the midst of turmoil and your friends will say to you, how? How? How can you think everything is gonna be okay when this has happened, this has happened, this has happened? And you can say, well, I'm glad you've asked. I have a Saviour that is come and His peace surpasses all understanding, that He loves me, that He's seen me already get through the struggle before I even knew about the struggle. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Awesome. So next point, Jesus is and always will be the hero of the story. 2000 years ago, Jesus is and always was the hero of the story. Today in your life, Jesus is and always will be the hero in our story. See, the disciples did, they did everything right. The disciples were trying as hard as they possibly could. They got to 3 a.m. in the morning and the Bible said they were still rowing. They were still pushing. They were still struggling. They were still going hard with what Jesus had told them to do. Verse 48, it says, He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and the waves. There's going to come a time with what God has called us to do and you're going to step out and you're going to go as hard as you can and you're going to do everything right. And a storm's going to come, not because you did something wrong, not because you doubted, not because you've you've got the list in your head that you tell yourself sometimes, but we're going to do everything right, but it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. So what's the point? 
What's the point of Jesus telling us to do something great? What's the point of Jesus telling us to do something amazing if we can't do it by ourselves? That's exactly the point. We cannot do this by ourselves. What God has called us to do, we need Him. If we could do it without Jesus, it wouldn't be that amazing. If we could do it without Jesus, it's not gonna change the world. If we could do it without Jesus, it's not gonna be something to see people come to salvation. Jesus is the only one that can save. So we have to include Jesus in the journey. Yes, you might have a prophetic word before. Yes, there'll be a time in prayer and you know God has placed something on your heart. God, I'm gonna do this for your kingdom. I believe you put this on my heart and you're gonna step out into great things. But, your dependence still needs to be exactly the same as when you started and got that word in times in relationship with Jesus because He's the only one that can save. As we draw close to Him, our journey is gonna be powerful. Jesus never promised us smooth sailing. Following Jesus is not gonna be smooth sailing, but it is gonna be powerful. It is gonna be powerful. You can't obey Jesus. You can't follow Jesus. You can't put Jesus first in every area of your life and it not be Powerful. This is the bit where I never really got at the start. Jesus was there and he intended to go past them. And I saw that and I was like, why? Like, why would he do that? And we had to think about it more. And my reasons why for the Scripture has actually changed over the years. If I've gotten old, I'm doing Bible college, I'm learning more about the full picture as to why. And in my 30s, I'm now currently at the belief that it's because Jesus wanted to see if they were gonna keep struggling by themselves or if they were gonna cry out to Him. If they were gonna keep struggling by themselves, they were gonna keep pushing by themselves. If they were keep gonna try and get this thing going, get this thing going in the right direction when the storm comes, when the wave hits, when the wind hits. If they're gonna keep trying to do it by themselves, but they didn't. They didn't, they stopped what they were doing. They cried out to Jesus. And this is the key to this whole Christian walk. This is the key to our whole Christian journey is a dependency on Him. There'll be a time where we've, whether we've had a prophetic word or whether God has deposited something, whether we've read the Scripture and something has jumped out at us and the call of God has come upon our lives. As a church, we have a corporate call of God and as individuals, we have a call of God on our life. So you start strong. Like, God, yes, this is exciting. I'm gonna do this for your kingdom. This is gonna be amazing. I've got it. I've got the timing right, the location right. I've set off in the right direction. But you get into the middle And then the waves hits, the storm hits, endurance then has to kick in. It's like, are you gonna keep going when it's hard? It was exciting, it was fun at the start. It was like adrenaline, it's like, yes, let's do this. But now when things have slowed down, things have gotten harder, you know Jesus still called you to do it, but what are you gonna do in the middle of that area? For you to get the end, get to the end of this journey, and there is a glorious end to the end of this journey. We're gonna read at the end, but how are you gonna get there? It is through a life of dependence on Jesus. No matter where you find yourself, whether you begin to skyrocket in your field of business, in your work, in your family, in whatever area you find yourself in, the keys are still the same. Things, the details could get bigger, but the principles are still the same. A journey, a relationship with God that isn't just reserved for Sundays, but through the Monday to the Saturday that we live every day with Him dependent on Him. God, you've spoken in my life. I'm gonna walk this thing forward with you, Jesus. And as I read this, there's something jumped out on the pages that I hadn't seen before. Because the disciples, they were so terrified. And I believe in the practical sense, they were terrified of the storm. They were terrified of the wind and the waves. It was pitch black, it was nighttime, all this stuff that began to hit them. And maybe part of the fear was that they know Jesus called them to do something and they've tried as hard as they can, but maybe they're not gonna be able to do what God had called them to do. I've felt that fear before, where it's been so exciting at the time where God, I'm gonna do this. You've played this on my heart. I believe, God, we're gonna do this together. The start is so exciting, but you get to the middle. and It's like, I don't know if I can go on anymore. This is so much harder than I thought it was gonna be. Jesus, are you there? Are you not there? The wind is hitting, the waves are hitting, the storm is crashing, it's pitch black. Jesus, are you still here? 
There is a fear sometimes that can I even do what God has called me to do? And I wanna take the pressure off you this morning that without Jesus, you can't actually do what God has called you to do. There's not so much pressure on you because you aren't the hero of the story. You're not the one that comes in and just saves the day. It is Jesus. It always was Jesus. It always will be Jesus. And at the moment you just cry out to Him, He will come into your circumstance. He will come into your matter because He is already there. He is already there. He was already there on the water. And in your life today, I wanna tell you whether you feel Jesus or not, He's already there. Jesus is already with you. If you ask Jesus into your life, you said the prayer, say, Jesus, I believe you're real. I believe you're the death, burial and resurrection. I believe you're in my heart. Then Jesus is always there. If you don't feel Him, if circumstances, if storm hits, whatever comes, that is not stronger than Jesus. That has not changed the position of Jesus because our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is in Him. The Gospel is still the same. And I believe that Jesus is gonna set people free today. In your minds, Jesus is gonna set people free today because Jesus has come. Jesus has come and He is a Saviour. And there's something, oh, I'm getting a bit excited, but leads me to my next point. Now, I've actually designed this one to rhyme so you actually remember it, <laughs> all right? I mean that, I'm serious. I sat over at my computer going backwards and forwards. Like if people remember nothing else but this little rhymey bit, then that is okay. Even in your doubt, still cry out. <laughs> oh, you, come on. That took me a couple of minutes. Uh, I felt a little bit silly doing it, but I was like, nah, I want people to remember it. Even in your doubt, still cry out. I wanna read something from one of the other Gospels. We have been reading from Mark, but in Matthew, it has a slightly different, a different view of the matter. In Bible college, they talk about using all of the Gospels to see the picture. If there was a traffic accident at an intersection and a witness on each corner, they would all see something a little bit different. And the police would ask questions of each of them to get the full story. This is the same way. This is, we're going to the other Gospels to see the complete picture of this story. So Matthew 14, verses 24 to 29. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw Him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, He said, take courage, I am here. This is a bit, this is a bit I love. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Notice those words. Peter said, if it's really you, if it's really you. Peter didn't fully know at the time Peter doubted at the time, but did his doubt stop Jesus coming to him? Did it? Will your doubt stop Jesus coming to you? No. Will your doubt stop the plans of God coming to fruition in your life? No. If you cry out to Jesus, it says multiple times they didn't even understand the loaves beforehand. They didn't understand the miracle beforehand. They didn't understand if it was really Jesus or not. But Peter being full of faith, he said, if it's you, tell me to do the impossible. He said, if it is you, call me out on top of the water. Call me to stand on what you're standing on. Tell me to walk where you're walking. Tell me to do what you're doing. And Jesus, I will do it. I don't have all the answers right now. I don't understand everything right now, but I do understand your word and it is powerful. Tell me to do it and I'll do it. You can be honest with God. Sometimes I don't know where the thinking came in that we can't tell God everything. If you're doubting with God, if you don't understand what's going on, tell Him. He knows you don't understand anyway. Tell Him, be in communication, have a conversation. Say, God, I don't understand what's happening. God, you said it was gonna be like this. You told me to get in the boat and go to Bethsaida. It's gonna be amazing. You didn't say anything about the middle. 
And the middle is what I'm struggling with right now. The middle is where I'm pulling my hair out. The middle is where I don't know if I can go on anymore. Tell Him that. He is a loving Father. One of the things I love about being a parent is when my kids come to me and they say, like, if, like they're six and four, like it's not very deep stuff at the moment, but they'll say, I don't understand this or someone said this at school and it made me feel like this and you just walk them through it. But if he doesn't have that conversation with me, I might know that something's up, but unless we have that conversation, he can't get an understanding. If you have questions, ask them. It's the only way to get the answer. And I know, you know, when stuff stays in our own mind and we don't communicate it, it gets twisted, it gets warped, it gets further and further away from the truth when we don't talk about it openly. The other thing I love about this, Peter said, call me out on the water. If it is you, then tell me to do the impossible. Jesus, I don't understand everything right now, but there was a faith that was stirring in Peter that said, tell me to do something amazing. Tell me to do something impossible. Tell me to walk on what you're walking on, Jesus. I don't know what it is for you. Say, Jesus, if it is you, tell me to do something my family has never done before. Jesus, if it is you, call me out to do something my education says that I cannot do. Jesus, if it is you, call me out to do something that my circumstance, the way I was raised, my background, my culture, I throw whatever excuse you want at it. Jesus, if it's you, tell me to do something impossible. Tell me to walk on what you're walking on. Tell me to do something amazing because I don't know how to get there, but I know that you do. It is a dependence on Jesus. The dependence is not on your intellect. The dependence is not on your procedures, your protocols, how you sort things out. The dependence is on Jesus because everything else is gonna let you down. So this is where we stop and we celebrate Jesus has come. He has came into our world and He wants to come into your circumstance. This gospel is still the same. He wants to come to your life today and bring salvation. One of the other scary things, because it talks about this being a massive storm, the waves, the wind, it was pitch black at night. And so if you're Jesus standing on the water, the waves rise up and the waves go down. The waves go up and the waves go down. I think that's part of why the disciples were so scared. Like, Jesus, is that you? Are you really there? Jesus, I thought you were in this storm. I thought I saw you, but I can't see you anymore. Jesus, are you still there? And sometimes we can feel like that. Like, God, are you still here? There's been times where it's been in worship at home and in prayer. I felt you here, but now I don't actually feel you or see you anymore. Jesus, are you still here? Yes. Yes, regardless of how you feel and even regardless of what you see sometimes, Jesus is still here. Jesus is still present. The other thing I love about the Scripture, if it's under Jesus' feet, it's gonna be under your feet. Whatever is under Jesus' feet, it's gonna be under your feet. Being under the feet of Jesus, being under your feet speaks of having authority over if it's under Jesus' feet, then He has authority over it. If it's under His feet, we have authority over it. The water is what caused other people to drown. But Peter said, tell me to the apostle. Peter walked on what has stopped others. Peter began to walk on what was coming against them to stop them. You can do the impossible. You do have authority over the circumstance. You do have authority over the storm that hits. Storms are just not... Storms are a part of life. Storms are not for life. You have the authority to speak to that thing and stop it in its tracks. You can stop it where it is. You don't have to endure it. What you're facing right now, you don't have to think, this is it. This is my lot for life. You can step on top of it because you have dominion over it. But how do you do that? You call upon His name and His Word because He is the one where our authority originates from. He is the one where our power originates from. You excited about this this morning? Yeah. I am, so I really hope you are. All right. So, Hebrews chapter 13. This is the part that we've got to wrestle with sometimes. Jesus, are you here? Are you there? Are you here? Are you still with me, God? Can I feel you in this storm? Jesus, am I by myself in this? Am I now alone in this? But in Hebrews chapter 13, verses five, it says in the Amplified, just using the second part of this verse, for He, God Himself has said, 
I will not in any way fail you nor give you up nor leave you without support. Let's read this bit together. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake you nor let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. This is the Word of God for you this morning. This Word, I wanted to bring peace to you today, to take the pressure off yourself that Jesus, our Saviour, yes, He came to save you from your sins, but He has come to save you today exactly right where you are at. Just call out to Him because He is closer than you could ever imagine. He is closer than you think. He is with you. His Word says, I will not, I will not, I will not leave you. He's not going to leave you. Our faith is not in our ability to fight against the storm, but in His ability to save. He is a glorious Saviour. He is an amazing Saviour. We could go around this room and, and I encourage you to do that at times. Ask people about their story. Ask people how they got saved. Ask people how they found that relationship in Jesus. And I love testimonies. I love hearing people say about what life used to be like. And I'd searched everywhere. I'd looked everywhere, but the thing that I'd been looking for actually found me. And I remember when I was 18 years old, I stood right here in this room. I'd been searching for my whole life, trying to find something that would fill that empty place on the inside of me. You name it, I looked there. And nothing would appease me. Nothing would satisfy that hunger, that longing on the inside of me. But as an 18 year old, I came down here and I said, Jesus, I've got nothing else. Jesus, if you can do something with my life, then then it's yours. I feel something real here this morning. And we're gonna have an opportunity for that today. That if you've been searching for a long time and you've tried this, you've tried that and nothing's been able to satisfy that hunger that's on the inside of you, Jesus is here today and He's saying, I love you, I'm here for you and I will not, I will not, I will not ever leave you, abandon you, relax my hold upon you, that you have a loving God that is here today. In this Scripture, there's two actions and a reason why. Do not be afraid. That is so easy to say, isn't it? Do not be afraid. It's when you get into those storms, if all you thought about was the wind, if all you thought about was the waves, was about the darkness, then yeah, that is very scary. But if you take your attention off of that, not be consumed by what is in front of you, and you begin to look up and say, Jesus, you are here, that you are an all-powerful God, that you are a present God. You have saved me before time and time again. And I know you're gonna save me again right now. I've seen you do it before in other people. I believe you can do it in my life right now. I remember you did this in my life when I was younger. It was amazing. You turned everything around. And Jesus, I believe you can do that again today. Is with this kind of testimonial faith, with this kind of thing where you begin to share with other people about your story. Because your story, you might think, oh, I've told people that before, but your story might be something that stirs a faith in someone else and say, if Jesus, you did it for them, you can do it for me. If you did it for that person, then Jesus, you can do it for me. Take courage. First action is do not be afraid. The second action is to take courage, is to grab a hold of something. We can only take courage by grabbing a hold of Jesus because everything else will let us down. At times, everything else will fail. No matter how good they are, if it's not Jesus, it will let you down. Take courage, grab a hold. Because why? Why? Because Jesus has come. Because Jesus is here. And I believe as I've been ministering this morning, there has been things in your list, in your mind that you've been going through. And say, Jesus, I need you to come into that. Jesus, I need you to step in. Jesus, I didn't feel you at times, but I believe you're here. I need you to step in right now into this circumstance. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Can anything separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean He no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory 
is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing can separate you. So we've gone through the middle, we've started right, we got through the middle, we weren't afraid, we grabbed a hold of Jesus, said, Jesus, I believe you're here. What? Why? Why was this whole thing? It's because they got to the other side. Mark chapter 6, verse 53. After they had crossed the lake, they landed again a Sarah. They brought the boat to shore and climbed out. The people recognised Jesus at once. They ran throughout the whole area, carrying sick people on mats to wherever they heard He was. Wherever He went, in villages, in cities or the countryside, they brought the sick out of the marketplaces. They begged Him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of His robe and all who touched Him were healed. What was on the other side? What was on the other side of this journey? Massive salvations, massive miracles. They began to understand their greater identity in Christ. There was breakthrough. Four walls of a church could no longer contain what they had been through. The building cannot contain what God has called us to do. This church is great, the church is amazing, but church is not a location, church is a people. So when they got to the shore, people ran to Jesus because they recognised when you get to where you are going, when you grab a hold of the call of God on your life, say, God, I'm going where you've called me to go. People are gonna recognise Jesus and they're gonna run. They're gonna bring the sick. They're gonna bring the hurting. They're gonna bring the broken. They're gonna bring those that need Jesus. They're gonna run throughout the villages, run throughout the countryside, run throughout workplaces. Why? Because Jesus has come. And you or I, we are Christians, we are little Christ, we carry, we are vessels that carry the power of God. And if you're here this morning, you're gonna have an opportunity for salvation soon. But at the end of the service, I want myself and the eldership would love to pray for you. We believe there is a call of God on your life. If you want someone to stand next to you and pray courage with you, we'll do that. If you want someone to stand with you in the storm and pray with you, we'll do that. The altar's gonna be open at the end. But for everyone else, you are a vessel. You are a carrier of the power of God. Our faith has been stirred. We have big faith for what's gonna take place. As you step out in community, as you've gone through this storm, people have seen how you've gone through it. You cling to Jesus the whole time. Salvation, salvation, salvation. The breakthrough that you have been needing is gonna come. Why? Because Jesus has come. What's on the other side of your journey? Take courage this morning because Jesus has come. Take courage this morning. Grab a hold of faith. Grab a hold of Him. God has called you to do great and mighty things. God has called you. There's some people known in the Bible, when they would go to towns, people called them the sons of thunder because wherever they went, the world was turned upside down. There's gonna be stories about you or I that when we go to places, situations are gonna be turned upside down from death, flipped over to life, from brokenness to wholeness, from sickness to healing. Why? Because Jesus is in us. So let's all stand this morning. We're gonna come into a time, we're gonna worship right now before we get into some other stuff. But as we worship, we're gonna sing about our resurrected God. We're gonna sing about the Jesus that has come, that has saved us then and He's gonna save you today.